All right, so we look at Leviticus 17, Genesis 9, and 1 John chapter 1. Now, there is a key ingredient that is powerful and the basis of our fellowship. You hear what I just said? Now, prayer is one of the tools of fellowship with God. Is that correct? All right, so if we see over here that prayer is one of the key ingredients and tools of fellowship, then that means that why are we able to have fellowship with God? There has to be a basis for that, you understand. There has to be a basis for why we are able to have fellowship with the Father, which includes prayer. So what is the basis of our fellowship? We want to find that one out over here. The basis is through the blood. Because of that precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to understand that through the blood we are able to have fellowship with the Father. That is the basis, the condition of prayer. That is why we can talk to the Father. It all comes through the blood. Blood is very important to God. Look at uh, 1 John chapter 1. Look how we fellowship. The Bible says <clears throat> in verse 7, But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have what? Fellowship, Fellowship one with another. So in, notice, and the blood of what? Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sins. Amen. So notice that this blood is important for the basis of fellowship. Why? Because when we sin, then what happens? Then our fellowship with the Father is hindered. That's why it says in verse 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to what? Cleanse, Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Look at uh, verse 3, that, we, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So prayer is the basis of this. That is very important. Why? Because the reason why is, one, we need forgiveness because holiness. Sin hinders prayer. So then the blood is important. Not only that, the reason why the blood is important, I realized, is because, look at the book of Genesis 9. It's life. It's life. Now, think about it. If the Holy Spirit is going to intercede and guide your prayers, the living Spirit, He cannot do that without what? Without the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ granted you salvation, the Holy Spirit was also able to give you life. That's the reason why God took blood seriously. Now, I, one day I'm going to do a deep doctrinal study on blood, which is intensely interesting. But Amen. there is no doubt in my mind, blood is very significant to God because He sees it as life. Yeah. Amen. Look at Genesis chapter 9. Notice why God condemned murder. All right, Genesis chapter 9. Verse 4. But flesh with the life thereof... Okay, He considers flesh to have life. Why? Keep reading. Which is what? Which is the blood thereof? Look at that. He thinks that a living uh, body is alive where it has the blood. Now look at the book of Leviticus chapter 17. Leviticus chapter 17. Leviticus chapter 17. That's why we believe that the blood of Jesus Christ, that it's living and it's alive. It is powerful. Amen. John MacArthur, he uh, really diminishes the power of the blood. He thinks it's just the act of the cross itself. But no, the substance itself is extremely important to God. There is no doubt about that. Amen. It is actually uh, so important that God considers it as life and active. You want me to give you tons of verses? One example, Jesus said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood then you have what? Eternal life. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Lord's Supper, if you, uh, if you don't take the Lord's Supper seriously, the Apostle Paul mentions that you're doing condemnation to His body and blood if you don't take it seriously. 
Amen. Now, uh, the passage about doing disgrace to his body and blood has nothing to do with salvation, that, praise the Lord. And the book of John is obviously not talking about the Lord's Supper. The book of John's talking about when you receive Christ for your salvation. See, you're a part of it, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. See, you have his blood in you. How about that? Man, that is, uh, that is serious stuff. Look at uh, Leviticus 17, 14. The blood is what? For it is what? The life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the what? Life. It's life. It's life. Verse 11, the famous verse. For the life of the flesh is what? In the blood. In the blood. It's because of life. There's no doubt about that. So blood is important because it has life. It's living. And the greatest example is when you look at the book of... Let's look at a quick example. Go to Genesis 4. Genesis 4. God sees suffering as something very, very powerful to him. It speaks to him. You know why uh, blood is alive? Because God thinks so. God thinks so. Look at the book of Genesis chapter 4. Verse 10, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy what? Brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. God thinks it's alive. Uh, you want another one? You jump to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation 6. What do you think made the prayer powerful for the tribulation saints? What do you think made the tribulation saints prayer powerful? That as you look at Revelation chapter 8, God sent the plagues and answered their prayers. Based on what? Their suffering, their blood. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and what? Avenge our blood. And that prayer was powerful. If you look at Revelation 8, it's powerful prayers. It ain't just some simple prayer. It's powerful prayers. God was storing it up on the altar, dumped it, and His power manifested. Boom! Like that upon all the earth. Amen. And those were the plagues and the vials and the uh, et cetera, et cetera. Those were the judgments. So these are several things. Now, there's no doubt there's power in the blood. Another thing is that it drives away devils. Look at Revelation 12. It's important for spiritual warfare. Now, I'm giving you all these things concerning about the blood, and then I'm going to tell you I'm going to show you how this is done with prayer now, okay? We've seen how blood of suffering uh, can be involved in prayer, life involved in prayer, holiness through the blood in prayer. And not only that, victory over devils as well. Because look at the book of Revelation chapter 12. The blood is necessary to overcome Satan. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the what? Blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Look how suffering is involved. And they love not their lives unto the death. And this was against two. That was against Satan at verse 9. Now, there's no doubt, these four things are definitely essential when they're connected to the blood. Can we all agree with that one? Yeah. God sees something important with the blood through these four things. There's no doubt. Not only that, in the power of prayer, uh, it, is it is combined with our spiritual warfare with Satan. Is that correct? Yes. If you don't believe in that, you didn't read Ephesians 6. All right? We've seen how suffering was involved to make prayer more efficient. Did we see that? Yes, we've seen that. Revelation uh, chapter 6. Uh, you want me to give you another one? Uh, go to Hebrews 12. Another one. Another one. Hebrews 12. Shouldn't the best prayer example be Jesus Christ? Oh, yeah. Amen. So when he was praying at the Garden of Gethsemane, wouldn't we agree that that was his one of his strongest prayers? Because he, he put his whole heart and soul into that, right? The Garden of Gethsemane. Now look at this. Revelation chapter 12. 
And notice what the Bible says concerning about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, Hebrews, excuse me, did I say Revelation? Yeah, I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 12. Okay, I'm very sorry. If you look at verse uh, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, what endured the cross, despising the shame. Now, we have to look at Jesus as our primary example, correct? All right, go to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter 4. We'll look at verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4. And then we'll look at verse 14. Notice what the Bible says. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have uh, not an high preach, uh, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Now look at how prayer is involved here. Let us therefore come what? Boldly, Boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, look at that over there. So notice over here that we can come boldly to the throne of grace because of Jesus Christ, the high priest, right? Now, what did the high priest have to do to communicate? The only way he can do that is through what? Innocent blood. See, that because of holiness, that was necessary. There's a passage at Hebrews where Jesus said, where the Bible says Jesus did it through strong crying and tears when he was making strong prayers to the Father. It's so strong that he sweated as if it were what? Great drops of blood. Can I tell you something interesting? You know, pagans and the devil realize the power of the blood. You know that? So what do they do? They have their false blood over here. And through this false blood over here, through Satan and his minions over here, did you notice witchcraft practices over here? You know what they use? They use blood. Blood. Why? To, uh, this is interesting over here. When they do spells, you know what they use when they do spells? They use blood to conjure up power out of it. To conjure up life out of it. Wait a minute. There's life and power in where? The blood over there. And God thinks that the blood can speak. How about that? How about that, right? But imagine if it was the blood of Jesus oh, yeah. that spoke to the Father. Oh, you made that up. <sighs> Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Look at verse 24. You ready, you ready to get your minds blown up? Let's see if you read this in your Bible, huh? Maybe you didn't pay attention to this. Hebrews 12, 24. Remember, Abel's blood spoke. Is that right? Did we see that? Okay, look at this. Hebrews 12, 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the what? Blood of sprinkling that what? Speaketh better things than that of Abel. Wow. Booyah! <laughs> Whoa is right. Oh, yeah. yeah, amen, brother. Amen. So you see that over there? The blood speaks. Amen. The blood speaks, my friend. Why, I mean, I don't have time to look at all these verses, but if we look at more verses, why do you think that Jesus Christ can be high priest for us when we pray? Huh? Because of the blood. Amen. So he's speaking to the Father. See? Why do you think that uh, Romans chapter 8, when we pray to the Lord, even if our prayer is incorrect, Christ can intercede and then correct the prayer? It's because of the blood. It speaks. It's all through the power of the blood. So it speaks for us. Now, that's a lot of power in your prayer life, right? So, what do, so then how do we involve this through our prayer life now, right? So then if blood is that powerful where you can conjure up something and bring it to pass, here's another one. Go to Colossians. I'm going to show you two more passages. Col uh, Colossians 1 and then 1 Corinthians 2. We're going to look at Colossians 1 and 1 Corinthians 2. 
Check this out, man. Didn't you know that, um, think about it, if it, Revelation, uh, man, we, there are so many verses about prayer and blood that I don't have time. Revelation 5, Jesus was able to unleash the seals and bring his kingdom on earth, right? Rule his kingdom. He cannot do that until he unleashes the seals. That's what the Bible says in Revelation, right? Can't bring his kingdom to rule and reign, and he cannot unleash the seals to judge away Satan's kingdom unless what? Unless it was worthy as the lamb that was slain. Because he was slain, he was worthy to open it. Amen. So you got to realize this. The blood is so powerful that if he had not, you got to realize this. When he died on that cross, it changed Satan's kingdom system. It was able to redeem all of mankind. Yes, God is in control over all the universe, amen? Nothing will change that, but he gave permission and power to the devil to control. But Jesus Christ had to win it back. The only way he could win it back was through the blood. He had to die. It was that important. It was that important. Otherwise, mankind would be uh, forever lost, so to speak, too. Child of the devil, child of hell, had it not been for the blood. So look at this one, Colossians uh, chapter 2, verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, period, nope. colon. colon. Look what happened through salvation through his blood. Who is the image of the invisible, invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him, look at this, all of creation involved, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things are created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist, and he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile, look at this, all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be what? Things in earth or things in heaven. Woo! Amen. See, it was by that payment through his blood. And because of that, uh, he can have all of creation. Now, the thing is this, is that uh, Dr. Ruttman warned about the modern translators, how they went around this. And then you, uh, to avoid the modern translations argument, they think that this would be every single speck on the entire universe that is, uh, that is bought by the blood. But that don't make sense. And the angel, then you're talking about hell. There's things on earth that is imperfect and still corrupted in sin. The idea is this, though, which is against Calvinism, which is the key. The idea is it's reconciling all things to himself, but the, it's based on a condition when you accept it. Amen. That's the key over there. So then until mankind accepts it, they are a part of that. Now, did you accept it? Amen. Now, Amen. then do you have power to have all things as yours then by his blood? Amen. Yeah, because look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, excuse me, chapter 3. Look at this. Verse 21, therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are what? Yours. Yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are what? Yours, Yours and ye are Christ and Christ is God. Amen. Wow. So then, okay then. So then, through the power of the blood, we can take claim on everything. Everything. All right, so how does this work now, right? Well, look at, remember your previous lessons on prayer. Think about it, and let's see if they can match for this one. Ready? One, let's get rid of this. Amen. Bless God. All right. When you pray, what's one of the important conditions when you pray? It's faith, right? Yeah. Yes. Now think about this. If you had faith in his blood to save your soul, you can't have faith in his blood that you own everything? Yeah. That's good. Wow. So then your problem is you don't believe it. So when you, uh, so you have to believe it. Do you have faith in the power of his blood? Or was singing the song, there is power in the blood, it's under the blood, 
saved by the blood, nothing but the blood, there's a fountain filled with blood, you don't really believe that. You're just saying the words. The second thing is to claim it. The se second thing is to claim it. Why? Because when you have faith, you're believing what God says and that it will come to pass. So that's the idea about claiming. So then when you plead the power of the blood, you have to claim it as if that you will get it at that moment. Yep. Now remember, uh, George Mueller, when he prayed, isn't that how prayer works where you claim it? When George Mueller prayed, he claimed it by faith, believing that what, uh, what he prayed for, he will get. Now remember the boundary line is that we don't know completely about the will of God, right? So you can go yes, no, or wait. However, here's the thing, I, ta I taught you this before. The more you grow in relationship with the Father, you know exactly what it is that He'll say more of yes on and no on and wait on. You know. That's why George Mueller had that faith that he knew that it would come to pass. That's how deep his relationship is with God. So then if you have that kind of deep relationship, then when you claim it by the blood, when you, you, you say, Lord, by the power of the blood, I claim it, and then you give the person who gets saved, you mention about the need that needs to be provided for, or even physical things that God will grant you. Or the promises that he gave in his word through his spirit. So then you claim it as if you're going to get it. That's why we put claim here, because that's the kind of faith you need. And that's the kind of prayer life George Mueller lived by. But now claim it through the blood. Say, I claim it by the blood, Lord. You think that's powerful? Because why? The blood, what? It speaks. And that's why you got to use the promises of God, right? Use his word. Is it, remember what I taught you about prayer? One of the key things to convince God is what? Use it, quoting scripture to him. George Mueller, when he prayed, he pointed a verse and said, this is what you promised, Father, so you have to give it to me. So, you know what you need to do? Lord, this, does not your blood speak? And because your blood speaks, bring it to pass. Isn't that a powerful prayer life? All right. Now, when you do that, then the next thing, let's see over here. Number four. So you believe, you have faith, and then you claim it, and you, use, and you speak it uh, through his word. So then when you use his word, now what you do after that is that when you use his word through the blood, here's something that a lot of people don't think about. A lot of people, they don't think about this one, which is what is already mentioned before. Suffering. What makes a more, uh, isn't that what we agree upon that where prayer life becomes more powerful? Well, let's use some examples. If the flesh suffers in starvation when you fast and God wants you to pray, fast and pray, why does that bring more powerful prayer results? Why is it that when people shed blood that the Lord hears their cry like the tribulation saints and then brings a powerful answer to the prayer request through their blood? See, the Lord hears, uh, hears the suffering. Didn't you know that the suffering of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, was not only to give you salvation, but also the Bible says the opportunity to what? Suffer for his sake. How, how about that? So when you're using his blood, your blood, if you combine your blood with that, that would be very powerful. Romans chapter 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice. Amen. And it wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God loves that. If your body, when you're going through suffering, is a sacrifice to the Father, think about it. In the Old Testament times, what made God answer the prayers and send favor to the prayer of the person? When the sacrifice gave a sweet incense to his nose. And when your suffering goes up like a sacrifice, you know what God the Father is doing? That's a sweet smell. So let me give you a powerful example. All right? Lord, my family is run down. I'm about to lose uh, all my money. I lost my job. I'm about to go homeless. Nobody is helping me. I'm starving to death. And God, I haven't seen a soul saved. I tried to plant a church for years and nothing would go. God, will you help me over here? And you're on your knees fasting and uh, praying to the Lord. 
And then you know what God the Father is doing? He's smelling that incense from your sacrifice that you offer to him. And God's saying, that smells real good. But when he sees some fat and lazy slob Christian, uh-huh, giving a prayer and a fleshly request on top of that, no wonder God's will most of the time was no for you, right? Mm -hmm. That incense don't attract him as much. Booyah. All right, so now you know how to pray correctly? Amen, All right, and uh, this time, why not use the power of the blood with your prayer? Amen. That It is through the power of the blood that fellowship has become stronger and there's power in it.